Hello guys, hope you're doing well. Uh, this video is for uh, update or uh, revision for my previous video that I had to delete. And reason why I spoke with uh, T-Swift, I chat with him and he mentioned to me about my previous video that I pointed out the delta between temperature in and out should be less than 15 degrees Celsius. And it's not 100% correct because he has uh, his miners running uh, apparently at 26 degree uh, delta uh, between in and out temperatures. And he sent me that uh, the picture of his uh, uh, miner showing that as a proof. So I'm going to show you guys that. So when I chat with him, he's like, it's not exactly um, true right here. So you see between uh, temp 1 and temp 2 it's about 26 degree and the miner running fine on 320 version so uh, what i meant to say is actually it's not just the delta between uh, in and out temperatures what you need to watch out is uh, the increase between those two so let's say you have a great ambient temperature or like 30 degrees right um, and i mean on the in temperatures and out about 10 degrees or 15 degree or let's say even 20 degree 26 different like T-Swift has but if you're you're starting the trying out let's say this is running on 300 version this running on three that one is 300 version and this one also but let's check the 320 version which is my uh, one 19 i believe right so and we could see then uh all the all the i have all the version i have 300 running right here i have 320 uh giga hash overclocks running here and this is 340. so and you could see there's 10 10 degrees difference there uh there's about 14 degrees delta here on that uh, 320 version and about 13 degrees difference there which is no problem but um, when your second uh, temperature out or temp one is continuously increasing so let's say you have this 30 and i would have 44 running for first maybe five six minutes and then this starts increasing and going up and up like to 50 and then 55 and then to 60 then you'll definitely going to have to worry about the MOSFET cooling because that's where your temperatures, especially on the upper MOSFET, they're uh, getting high. And you're going to see the decrease in your hash rate almost like within, you know, sometimes it takes a little while depending how big, how great your air flows through the device. So it may take longer if you have a great uh, airflow. But however, if this temperature going to keep on increasing the temp out, and uh, then you know your what you have in your suffering on the MOSFETs and what you're gonna see on the web GUI I don't have that saved picture but um, basically on KS0 Pros what you're gonna see is the uh, something like going up and then down so your um, hash rate definitely gonna go up oh, and almost like going down like this so you'll see this trend going up and down that's that's pretty much your um st you start hashing to the full hash rate and then all of a sudden it didn't take uh that it, it overheated and it starts slowing down the hash rate just to release or it just restart the whole miner so the possibility of your mining going to be re constantly restarting or it's going to shut down and it will still consume the power so the worst thing is like it's you're still going to be using the power your electricity going to run but you're not going to mine anything so those are a couple things to watch out and also um what i want to point out is the when you run on this k0 pros uh overclocks and and um, they don't take let's say that they don't overheat so your temperature is totally fine like what i had in some of my videos uh showing you like uh, for example my one uh, 14 minor that's number two i'll show you it's it's running on 300 um, firmware and the reason is like i put any other firmware there is no overheating whatsoever the chips are cool 
average the, the temperatures here on the chip like like about the same 45 maybe 46 degrees so it's really chill nothing wrong but it would not take the overclock so what's gonna happen here I'm gonna see just basically not even from 320 version if I put right now it will just run 305 and then degrade to maybe 295 so my 300 performs the best for uh, this specific miner and this is the silicon uh, I'm getting silicon lottery on this one and but I'm still totally fine because before I couldn't get to 80 it was 270 firmware running on this device I couldn't get any higher so I'm happy because I have 300 version running fine stable it's five days here uh, just few re rejected shares I guess uh, maybe I had some flip on the um, on Ethernet uh, sometimes that happened then you get a little rejection but it's it's very very minor which I'm totally fine with that uh, on the other hand I have the 320 version I have like 20 rejected shares so I'm kind of trying to watch watch out for this but come on it's five days and if you only have a little bit of rejection there it's fine but if you have right away start getting rejection rejected shares so you're not gonna get a proper payout but look at this guys this this one running 340 giga hash a version for five days it's only one rejected share temperatures are fine there and the um, totally fine running stable on the, on the pool so this is what's important here uh, to check on your ice river monitor and more importantly when you check in your uh, pool is to make sure you get in your um, average hash rate what I mentioned before is correct to your uh, specification so like right now I am outperforming pretty much on the hump pool on all of my devices I'm getting 326 on the 320 version 3 well this one a little slightly lower but I'm not too worried about it it's still pretty close it and it's my silicon this is a really two bad of the miners two and three that didn't even work on 280 so I'm happy now and look at this one on 300 version it's doing 311 on 24 hours average then my 324 320 doing 324 340 350 300 doing 315 which is quite a bit nice and 357 uh, on my last one that doing on 340 so they're basically all outperforming their my estimation should be 2.23 tera hash but I'm running 2.29 so I'm getting almost 60 giga hash extra uh, on all of these devices and this is the uh, paid firmware so there is new firmware came out that just today that T-Swift uh, posted that you can download and you don't need to pay for it. It's all the same overclocked, but you uh, gonna be charged about half percent, only half percent for dev fee, which I think it's beautiful because you don't have to come up upfront with the payment, you know, like pay fifty dollars or something. You just can start mining on overclocks right away. And just a little by little pay that uh, probably not even gonna notice half percent, you know, because the pool uh, probably charges one percent. Some pools even one and a half. So um, with that is the let's check the hash rate on the network. It went to 168. Wow, pentahash dot 178, the highest. So it looks like going up and down for uh, new miners coming up and looks like the reason for it mainly is the ice river now if you look on the great miner just posted the video today also about the uh, all this ice river product came up and its prices dropped down I think quite a bit this like 2000 on kiss 3m at least probably right and then about maybe 2500 on ks3 not sure what case one case two was before but uh, about a hundred dollar here you're getting uh, about 80 bucks less on KS0 Pro and I think it's pretty good deals uh, overall but uh, profitability wise well let's take a look what's the best first if you're looking to buy one or just start mining it's kind of a little bit late and risky in uh, 
but you still can get into it and look what's your most preferable uh, miner. I put it, break it down here with, uh, first one is the clock stack, but that comes from Ice River. And the second one will have uh, overclocks to it and then the payment for overclocks. All this is paid uh, hardware, so I'll just add it, the payment for overclocks into the shipping here so we could see now. Also, you have to take in consideration if you order from Ice River, you will have to pay a duty tax in USA. I don't know about the other countries, but in California, it's about 25% what I've paid before. So it's crazy amount. You add, you have to consider that because anything I believe more than like three or five hundred dollars, it's going to be duty tax charge now there is no i i wasn't charged on 429 before on that price for i purchased one for 462 and uh, it's probably under that 500 dollar bracket i'm not sh exactly sure is the if it's for a year or it's per unit uh, but when i ordered two units together they ship them separate but they still charge me the duty tax so be careful on that depending how you order in don't place in one order two of the uh, miners because then you definitely gonna pay due to tax uh, if you buy them individually uh, you won't pay probably uh, hopefully I didn't but if you buy maybe individually one two three four you may still get that taxation I don't know I haven't tried that one now T-Swift will come up with the list of the best pricing available for all of these miners uh, hopefully today or tomorrow he mentioned that uh, in the chat to me and well let's take a look what's available here so what do we have we have the best perfor uh, best price it's dollar 48 per giga hash it is our ks3m of course the best price that we can get from ice river now let's take a look on uh, perfor uh, um, efficiency so this is the giga hash per watt uh, and obviously the higher it's better so our best one is KS3 overclocked and the KS3 hold on overclocked did I change yeah 3650 here and 3300 here so yeah you could see KS3 oh, uh, stock clock and overclock very very close they're almost the same identical uh, because you probably can get a little bit higher 88 or 8900 giga hash uh, hash rate uh, and then the following what's interesting is actually overclocked KS0 Pro uh, they get 150 watts uh, for that 300 version maybe slightly more than 150 because you're gonna use fan at least to cool it down but it's still pretty pretty good it's the uh you're running with the overclocked it's uh two two giga hash per watt so you're still getting a really really good um efficiency on those miners surprisingly ks3m is not as efficient however with the overclocks it may run i haven't tested out yet so hopefully that helps you to make that decision uh however on roi Casper price is still too low to ROI on any of these devices. So I don't, nothing showed up until probably we get uh, 15 cents on Casper. Well, let's try it out. Let's, let's put for Casper, let's say we put uh, 15 cents. Yeah, just to see if any of these miners will get ROI. Well, guess what? Nothing. All right, well, let's keep on going. Let's do Casper. 16 cents still no luck uh, let's do caspa 19 18 cents let's jump one cent any luck nothing okay let's do a uh, caspa 20 cents all right so on 20 cents we can roi next year on ks3 and that's my calculation based on potential hash rate grow on certain percentage it's not per day like uh ice uh caspa calculator they're available on kas.fyi uh, you can 
look at that calculator site uh, but um what i'm doing here i'm adding certain percentage how the hash rate gonna increase throughout because the um at first it's gonna go maybe um the higher but then it will probably slow down it will maybe be uh adding the same amount of hash at, at some point but then it will slow down i think around 500 uh pentahash that's where uh if you put the one single amount there there's nothing gonna change but anyways it's pretty close if you put the uh, i think a thousand uh giga hash there uh, per day that then you'll get probably more of the correct uh, calculation on that roi but to be honest uh, before 20 cents there's nothing gonna roi from this uh, asic for the price from ice river so now if it comes that the um, t swift will have that available maybe it will make more sense let's say if we have similar price for that ks3 and we don't that's include duties and shipment it's gonna change uh, the whole deal here so let's take a look oh what am i doing i change in the wrong place so let's delete this uh charges for duties and then okay so yeah now we have a little bit more of the um nicer data here yeah so definitely it looks nice okay so um 20 cents we can arrive even uh, this year for ks3 and ks3m nothing for other miners still at 20 cents but uh let's lower let's let's put 18 cents see if any of the miners gonna roi yes we're gonna get roi on uh, ks3m and ks3 even at 18 cents right here uh by um december this year on ks3 and ks3m will arrive by right here i'm gonna scroll so you can guys see by uh, march next year right for ks3m now um let's say 15 cents because that's let's that, that was before a more realistic number right so we don't know if it's gonna jump to yeah at 15 cents nothing gonna roi so think the casper needs to be around uh 16 or 17 cents just to get yeah nothing even on the 16 cents so 17 cents is where the k s3 gonna roi and yeah i think with the new pricing we could just potentially see uh this happening with the uh i don't know what this swift price is gonna be to be honest but we have chance if the caspa starts to go up i think a miners make price go up too a little bit on the um we've seen that before so we don't know but i i think that if the caspa gonna start pumping to 20 cents then we'll see a huge opportunity for all these miners and so the hash rate start pumping up so otherwise it will in my opinion it will be a little bit slower now on the hash rate grow so if we don't see caspa going up it will benefit for us we can get more caspa while we can so it will work out but to buy new miners we need to be a little bit higher on the caspa to make it a little bit more attractive in my opinion anyways that's pretty much it for this video uh i hope you guys have some uh good uh information for you to make this decision on this uh, and again you need to have enough power to run this bigger a6 like ks3 and ks3m you need to have 3600 available power uh but so you you have to have at least uh 20 amp 240 volts so yeah all right thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one